Alhamdulillah. In actual fact, um, I'm supposed to give the speech earlier, but I decided to do it at the last stage simply because I wanted to watch the whole program before I wanted to address all of you all. Now, in 2015, when we started this cultural diversity program, the main objective was for the different multinational clubs to know uh, what are the cultures and traditions each club had for the Indonesians, for the Filipinos, for the Myanmar, the Chinese, as well as any other club. Now we've got two more clubs coming up, which is the Indian club, as well as the Euro club, uh, the European club. Uh, we've got a couple of, I think, what, seven Angmos. Okay, so inshallah, the next program, uh, they will be doing something uh, in conjunction to their culture and tradition. Now, the thing is, um, as, as you all know, uh, most of the Mabuhai know me from the time that I was in CDD as the VP. And then last year, I um, graced the occasion as the Deputy President, and today I'm here as the President. But what I have uh, noticed in the Mabuhai group is uh, something that I am really hoping that it will always continue is the unity, okay? The unity that the Mabuhai have. And the way you guys enjoy your life. Now, I've had a lot of Filipino friends and I've seen, and I've said this before, and I will say it again. In Singapore or in Asia, the culture, especially Singaporeans, we don't tend to smile. Okay, we don't smile enough. Whenever we see each other, even if we say assalamu alaikum, we don't smile. But smiling is sunnah. Sunnah of the Prophet is to smile. And the people that I have always look to smile, apart from the Europeans, are the Filipinos. Okay, and gradually I think that has become contagious because now I get to see Myanmar, Indonesians also starting to smile. I really hope, inshallah, the Indians like myself will start to smile because our face looks very serious almost every time. Okay, mashallah. Now, the other thing is, um, the Filipino community in Singapore, uh, as you all know, uh, it has been growing in numbers. And uh, we, Dalwarkam, has always been able to attract many uh, Filipinos to our association, not only for religious classes, but for social activities. And in recent time, when the new management came into uh, administration in MCES, one of our biggest challenge is how to keep the number growing, you know, in terms of the Indonesians, the Philippines, the Myanmar's, how do we grow in numbers? How do we keep you all here so that you all make this space lively? Now, all of us agree, iftar is nothing without the Myanmar or the Indonesians or the Filipinos' uh, presence. You know, you are the people who actually run the iftar for us. We have got about 600 to 700 people coming for our, our weekend iftar. And most of our volunteers have always been here. Now, as a president, I never got a chance to thank you, so I'm taking the moment now to thank each and every one of you all for your continuous support. Okay, that's the first thing I want to do. <laughs> Secondly, with uh, all due respect to Mr. Guna, okay, your name in, in my language is Guna. My name is Imran Guna. Okay, so we have some similarity, mashallah. Uh, what we are looking uh, forward to is for the assistance of the Philippine Embassy. Uh, to work with us uh, because we are intending to set up support groups which is one of those things that uh, the multinational club have always wanted a support group what you see now is what we call the, the social aspect you know you do cultural shows you do gatherings and so on but there is also another element the development of uh, Filipinos the development of Indonesians and all so we are in the process of setting up support groups and these support groups is not only in Singapore. One of our pioneer projects that we intend to put in place is to link ourselves with Philippines, to set up a center there, and then work together, and provide assistance for our sisters and brothers who embrace Islam here. When they go back home, they are able to at least relay, if they have need any assistance, to go to this center and seek those assistance. And I, I know that in recent time, uh, the flood that happened in the Philippines, 
uh, has affected a lot of our volunteers, families, and all. We are trying our best to help them uh, to overcome this uh, you know, sudden impact in their lives. But Alhamdulillah, despite all challenges that our sisters and brothers face, today when I see you all happily enjoying everything, it makes me feel that we have a lot to learn from the Filipino community. You see? I've always feel that when we are faced by challenges, it takes us a bit of time to overcome the challenges. But we can't do it alone. So when I look at the Filipino community, and I think they will agree that despite whatever challenges they have, they've always come together week after week, getting together and having a good time. You know? Now the stigma, I'll use this word stigma. Stigma is when a group of people get together and laugh and enjoy, in Islam it seems to be like it's not right. But as we all go back to the time of the Prophet Wasallam, congregation, I mean, Muslims must always congregate together. In Singapore, if you look at the Malay community, or, or the majority of the Malay community, they have kanduris, uh, weddings. They get together, they laugh out, they sing dandut, they sing whatever, they not, and they, 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 they participate. That cannot be judged. You cannot judge someone. And I, in my own principle, I don't want anybody to judge anyone in that way. Now, just now I was delayed. I was delayed because I had a sudden call uh, where a mother and son, the mother is admitted in the hospital and uh, suddenly she, you know, I was activated saying that she wants to come to Islam but she wasn't sure because she felt that she doesn't know anything about the association. So I went down to meet her and spoke to her. I shared with her a story that I will share with you also. On 18 October, and I'm not sure how many of you all listened to the Mufti Skulia uh, recently. On 18 October at about 7 p.m., uh, just, just at Maghrib, I had a call uh, from this individual telling me that his mother-in-law wants to embrace Islam. But she is critically ill and she is admitted in Singapore General Hospital. So I got a call, I said, okay, what is the situation? She wants to embrace Islam. She has already taken the Shahada, but we need you to do it. So I'm one of those registrars who can do conversion. So I called Muiz and Muiz was also wondering how are we going to do because she can't speak. Her only communication, uh, communication is by nodding the head. Okay? She was a Chinese, Alhamdulillah. He's an Indian and if I were to go down and knocking the head would be a problem because Indian knock it for almost everything. So how to take it? So when I reached there, I realized she was very critically ill. So the husband is a non-Muslim. One of the daughters is a convert. The other daughter is also a non-Muslim. So I asked them, are you okay with it? They say, yeah, my mother got to die. Yeah? Suddenly she wants and she wants to embrace Islam, she loves to do this. So after going through all the processes, Mui is giving us the green light. He said, as long as we are clear, you can do it, we went and did it. Now when I was doing it, I had a biggest challenge in my life is when I asked her, do you believe in Allah, she did not answer because she was in too much of pain. She was just crying. Okay, she couldn't even nod at that time. So I called in the doctor, I said, I can't take this acknowledgement. I need you to medically say she's okay. At my back of my head is I wish it can be done. So the doctor said she will not live long, but she's okay now. But I can't promise you later stage whether she will be able to understand what you are saying. So I asked her again. I said, sister, do you believe in one God? She's not the head. Do you believe Allah is the only God? She's not the head. And when I asked her, do you believe that the Prophet Muhammad is our prophet and the last messenger of Allah. She nodded her head. So I said, okay, now we will do it. So we used a thumbprint, asked her to put a thumbprint, and then she started to smile. MashaAllah. She just smiled. So for a moment I was worried. She, she's smiling. And she, then we did the process and everything. We came up, I spoke to the husband, the husband cried. He said, uh, earlier I told you for the name, uh, what are we going to write in the name? So I went back and asked her, sister, we are giving you a Muslim name. Uh, your husband wants you to have a Muslim name. So her name is Kelly, a Christian name. So her husband said, can you give her a name which is start with K? So I, I, at that moment, I still don't know what to think, K. So I asked her, do you like to use the name Katija? She said, okay. So we gave her the name and I came back home. I came back home at 11.45. 1.30, I received a call that she passed away. And the husband called me and he cried on the phone. He said, my wife has gone to heaven. 
Thank you so much. So next day morning, Friday, I went down to the mortuary. We wanted to do to take the body and we went. It was quite delayed due to some processes because her conversion was done in the middle of the night. So Mui didn't have the record on time, so we had to do some changes and all. When we reached Pusaraman and when we were doing the Janaza prayers, it was almost Asar, so everything was prepared. So Asar prayers came, there were more than 50 people on that day. So the Ustad was saying that as long as you have a Jama more than 50 people, all her sins will be lost, will be washed away. So she died as a person without any sins. Once she was buried and everything was done, I came back, I sat down for a while and I looked at myself and said, how many of us will have that opportunity? Why should Allah give an 83 years old woman who would have not known about Islam all her life? She would have lived life the way she would have lived. And yet Allah gave her the opportunity within two hours to embrace Islam and pass away as a Muslim. Why am I saying this is, we will never know when Allah will call us or when Allah will call us into Islam. So if you are already a Muslim and you have friends who are non-Muslims and all they want is to come together in a social arena to build the Ukwa, just want to enjoy life, don't take it as it's wrong. How can you say you want to enjoy life? We cannot think like that. And if someone has done a lot of mistakes in life, you know, whatever way, and then they come to us and say that, you know, I have come to a point that I just want to be close to God, accept it, because Allah will accept anyone at the 11th hour, and all their sins will be washed away. So, in a nutshell, when you come here, when you enjoy, no matter how much of problems you have, how much of challenges you may have, my humble request to you is, take it out of your mind, put it aside, come here, have a good time, don't worry about what others have to say. When you are doing something good in the path of Allah, there will be a lot of challenges. The question is whether you want to take up the challenge and go ahead. Because Allah chose you. Unless you say, no, I don't want, I don't want any challenge, I just want to have a happy life. We all know that is not safe because this is dunya. What we want happiness in Ahira. So, this cultural diversity program was introduced because there are among you all who would have lived a very single solitude life. Because majority of them are domestic workers. And when they work six days a week and only one day off, they want to go out and have a good time. They want to forget their family who have, whom they have left and come here to work. They would prefer to be with their family or children, but they got no choice, they came. That one day in that seven days is very important to them. Who knows that could be the last day for them. So when you all come here, have a good time. Doesn't matter what people say. Important is Allah knows your heart. That's important. Now in that line, just now I had a chat with uh, Brother Zimbo, the VP of CBD. Uh, I shared with him that what we have done is not enough. There's more to be done. So the support group that we are setting up is one avenue. The other avenue is this cultural show that we are doing annually for the last three years should be done even more grander. Okay? Even more grander in a bigger arena. So I've asked uh, Mr. Zimbo to put up a budget, more budget for the next following year so that you guys have more budget. <laughs> now the other thing is there are dedicated volunteers among you. Sister Zarina, Brother Raza, Brother Shamir, Sister Zuraida, and a couple of more. Okay? All these people have a lot of challenges in life. They have come forward, they have made this possible. It could never be possible without all of you. And today we sit down and we laugh and we have a good time. It's because of the hard work this small group of people put up. There will be challenges. There will be challenges, there will be opportunities for people to divide us. You see the difference between the people who follow the religion Islam and some others is the division. When you are alone or you are divided, you will never be able to feel happiness. When you come together and stay as one group, you will feel the happiness and you will start to share the happiness. So we want the Mabuhai group to be together. Remember, regardless of what is happening, 
what is your basic reason for being a mabuhay what is the basic reason of you being here is to bring about the togetherness that you have that honestly speaking if you see across many races and all the filipino culture is so beautiful that you are always strong and the myanmar's and the indonesian are on par on that there is so much to learn if you look at us and i want to share this in a way and i am not being uh, discriminating uh, in any way to any religion or race there was once a big ship okay carrying baskets of crabs from one point in western country coming to asia okay so there was crabs from germany crabs from france crabs from crab you know akatam from us uh, many countries and there was this particular uh, basket and the baskets were all loosely tied up not properly tied up any time the crab can come out okay so the guy what he did was he tightened it up make sure that everything is tightened except for one basket he forgot to tighten it up it was loosely hanging and the ship set sail once he reached the destination he looked all the baskets where the crabs were tightly tightened up and really completely closed up there was no crabs inside but the basket which was they forgot to tie up and was loosely hanging where the crabs could easily uh, escape none of the crab actually escaped and they were shocked how is that possible so he went in and he looked at the basket every time a crab tried to try climb up the other crab from below pulled him down and he tried to climb up you understand that means uh, i want to come up but i pull your leg down i will go against you so they did this until none of them actually came up from the basket so we cannot be in that kind of community if you see your friend or your fellow colleague doing well don't pull that person down don't fitna the person help that person hold on to the person and the person will be able to carry you up i always like to use this line and i hope that you remember they like to say what goes around comes around right but everybody like to use it for what negativity that means uh, why oh, you do this to me uh. tomorrow i will do this back to you or some that's how we look at it why not look in the positive angle you do good tomorrow people do good for you today you carry somebody up tomorrow when you are in a situation allah will appoint somebody to carry you up and that is what dalwar kam supposed to be we want dalwar kam to have three aspect three things one to learn ilmu knowledge a place to learn knowledge the other part is to build congregation okay ukwa the third part is to feel happy and peace islam is about peace and happiness so when you come to dalwar kam you must feel happy not come here and say i don't want to talk to that person i don't like that person okay or oh, that person no 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 very bad i'm not going to mix so i'm going to only be with my groups if you do that what allah will do is allah is going to let your niyat come through you want to be alone right i let you be alone you want to be only with these people right i let you because now you want to your rest your need and your intention but if all of us try to think that come on this is our home regardless of whether we are convert whether we are born muslim whether we are a myanmar philippine indonesian we all are muslims and when we come to darul kam we feel that i'm so happy to be here because this is my home it will be a home inshallah okay so look forward for the coming years